Gentlemen, welcome back to the Wife Sewing Room. Today, electronics for the rest of us. The dope smokers, the jocks, the headbangers, the guys at the back of the class. And I get this all the time. How do I start? What do I need to buy? Well, really, you don't need to buy much of anything. Five, ten bucks on Mal's Express Dollarama and you're in like sin. Even so, a lot of guys after a video like this ask me, can you dumb it down a little bit more? I, I'm not quite getting it. So this is that. And what you need to recognize is that electronics is all about Lego. Everything is a building block. And once you recognize that anything, whether it be in a confuser or one of these little doohickeys, they're all just building blocks put together in different ways. So here we have some very basic building blocks. Resistors. These are essentially, they're a conductor. They're like a wire but they resist the flow of current. Now, here's a battery. This is a voltage and current source. Circuits need to be circular. They need to go around in a circle, okay? If they're open like this, and you connect this to the battery, then you'll have voltage here. You'll have nine volts, but you won't have any current. So in order for current to flow, there has to be a circuit. Here's an interesting question for you. Say you're a general dynamics, you're at Bath Ironworks building a ship and you're a welder on the ship. Okay, now we all know that welding is about electricity melting metal. So, now what happens? What happens if you have two welders on the same piece of metal? Are you going to blow up one welder because it's getting too much amperage? You know, say you're one welder's running 300 amps and the other one's welding with 50 amps, how come those 300 amps don't go and blow up that other welder? Why is that? Or maybe they do. Maybe you think they do. They don't because whatever goes into a circuit has to come out. So if there's 300 amps going out, leaving the welder, 300 amps has to come back in. Same with the 50 amp. 50 out, 50 have to come back in. That's why you can weld more than one person on a ship, because circular, it's a circuit. So what we have is a circuit component here. This is a resistor and it resists not the flow of voltage, but the flow of current. If there is current flowing through here, there has to be a voltage drop. So if we put this resistor across the nine volts, there is going to be a nine volt drop across this resistor and we're going to have some current flowing through it. Here we have a capacitor and it is a store of energy. It's another form of battery. And this one has a positive lead and you know it's positive because if you cut that extra little tab off and chooch it sideways, it makes a positive sign. And this stores energy, it resists the change in voltage. This resists the change in voltage and it stores energy. This is an inductor. It is an electromagnet. It also stores energy, but it resists change in current. This is a diode. It's a one-way check valve. Pixies can go in one direction, can't go in the other direction, but it's also special in that it's a light emitting diode. Now this has zero resistance. So if we were to hook this up, like so, let me show you here. There's the negative. So we'll go positive, negative. Nothing happens because it's a one-way check valve. But if you go the other way, snap, I just fried it because it's got no resistance. It had so much current go through it that it blew up. Garbage. Now here's a new LED and our first mission, knowing that if we just connect this up, it'll blow up, is to get this to light and stay lit. What we need is a resistive element in there to reduce the amount of pixies going through here. Now, we're gonna use a little bit of math. V equals IR, that is voltage is equal to current times resistance. So we know that this needs 20 milliamps, so 0.02 amps in order to chooch. So nine volts 
divided by 0. Point, well, 20 milliamps is 450 ohms. So if we get a resistor out of this handy dandy kit that's 450 ohms, then we're going to be able to connect it up to the battery without this blowing up. Okay, we've got this in the breadboard. This is a convenient little device for quickly hooking things up. Now we've got positive in, through this resistor, back to ground. Circuit, circuit. We're going to connect up the battery, which is the voltage and current source. Cool, contact. Let's attach the ground. There we go, let that relight. Now what if we wanted this to be a little dimmer? Well, we would add resistance. That would reduce the amount of current going through there. Less current, less power. But you don't have to take my word for it. Okay, now we've got another resistor in there in series that is back to back. So they, the resistance is additive. This resistance adds to this one. And we can see it's quite a bit dimmer. Now I've added a capacitor. Now this is an electrolytic capacitor. Essentially it's a foil. And it's got some liquid in there. It's two plates separated and all wound up and that basically it stores voltage is all it does and I'm going to show you what what that looks like now you're going to see something miraculous when I take this away it dims out slowly that's because the electrolytic capacitor is storing energy and it's actually feeding it's it's trying to maintain the voltage in the circuit Remember, capacitors resist change in voltages. So they're great because if you have voltage spikes and all sorts of weird shit going on in your circuit, they limit that. They're like a, a hydraulic accumulator for, for electricity. Now you may have noticed that I put this in parallel with the LED circuit. Now I'm going to put this inductor in series. Now this stores energy as well, but it resists change to current flow. Now we've got the toroidal inductor in series with the circuit and the electrolytic capacitor in parallel with the circuit. And we connect up the circuit so that the pixies can go around and around in a circle. And when we disconnect the battery, you can see how much longer it takes to go out. That's because these two circuit elements are storing energy. Now, if you're at all interested in doing some more basic soldering and messing around with surface mount stuff, uh, I've been working with my buddy Rich Johnson on this. He, he laid it out. This is a ruler. That's a workshop ruler, but it's got an interesting feature here in that we've got some pads for surface mount devices. And uh, yeah, it's a little lighted ruler. It's got an ocular pinhole uh, device here that helps you focus on, well, it helps you resolve fine detail. It's also got some other features. There we go. You can measure gap width with it in thou, thousandths of an inch, as well as the more typical shop lingo style. It's got the focus you fac hole, as I said. It's also got bolt hole threaded bolts fastener sizes now this is uh, purple because it came from Osh Park but we're gonna get these in black I'm gonna spin up I think I'm gonna spin up a hundred and uh, give them away so if if you want to build this along with me we'll do a video uh, just for shits and giggles and put your name down in the doobly-doo and I'll send you one and just to reiterate a gift is in the giving no these are not for sale I'll spin up a bunch and give them away. Thanks a lot for watching. Keep your dick in advice.